So this is about Elion and the inheritance of God. And the reason for the aforementioned title is because we're going to be talking about Elion and Yahweh inheriting Israel from him. Now, over here you'll notice something very interesting. And that is Elion and Amon. Elion being also called El. And it's both simultaneously a Canaanite god and an ancient Semitic god. While Amon is the Egyptian god. Now what is interesting about these two is that a moon is depicted in a very similar fashion to that of Elion on the left. They're both wearing identical <coughs> common looking head things on their head on their heads I'm about to say and sitting in a very similar posture. Now that is something very interesting because not only do the two look alike, but the two do the exact same things. A moon divided the lands of Egypt, and the gods received the inheritance from him. So the same thing takes place with Elion, where his sons also received an inheritance from him. Next up here, this is the Moabite stone, also called the Meshesila. It dates to the 9th century BCE. And it details a very interesting account, that is, it seems to resemble what takes place in 2 Kings chapter 3. And this is quite significant because it talks about Omri. The vessels of, uh, of Yahweh. And a, con and, and a deity in conflict with his God called Chemosh. Now, I'm going to read the translation of this stone. It says, I am Mesha, the son of King Oshana, the king of Moab from Dibon. My father was king over Moab for 30 years, and I was king after my father. And in Karka, I made this high place for King Mosh, and because, because he has derived, delivered me from all kings, and because he has made me look down on all my enemies. Omri was the king of Israel, and he oppressed Moab for many days, for King Moshe was angry with his land. And his son succeeded him, and he said, He too, I will oppress Moab in my days. He did so, but I looked down on him and on his house, and Israel has gone to ruin. Yes, it has gone to ruin forever. Omri had taken possession of the whole land of Medeba. He lived there in his day. In half the days of his son, forty years, but he most restored it in my days. And I had, and I built Balmion, and I made it I made in it a water resorber, and I built Karathia, and the men of God lived in the land of Torah from ancient times. And the king of Israel built on Torah for himself, and I fought against the city, and I captured and I killed all the people from the city as a sacrifice for King Mosh and for Moab. I brought it back a fire hearth of his uncle, and from there, of his uncle from there, and I halted before the face of King Mosh and Karor, and I made the men of Sharon live there as well as the men of Maharath. And King Mosh said to me, Go take Nebu from Israel. 
and I went in the night, and I fought against it from the break of dawn until noon, and I took it, and I killed its old population, 7,000 male citizens, and aliens, female citizens, and aliens, and servant girls. For I put it to the ban, as Char Kimosh, and from there I took vessels of Yahweh, and I hauled them before the face of Kimosh, and the king of Israel had built Jahaz and he stayed there during his campaigns against me and Kimosh, drove him away before my face, and I took 200 men from Moab, all the division I led it to, got to Jahaz, and I had taken it in order to add it to deep on. And I, <coughs> I have built Karka, the wall of the woods, and the wall of the citadel, and I have built its gates, and I have built its towers, and I have built the house of the king, and I have made the double was over for the string in the land of the city. Now there was no more cistern in the end of the city and Karka. And I said to all the people, make each one of you a cistern in his house, and I cut out most of most for Karka. By means of prisoners from Israel, I have built armor, and I made military road and maybe armor. I have built Beth Martha, for it had been destroyed. I have built Bezer, for it lay in ruins, and the men of Devon stood in battle order for all Devon. They were in subject Subjection, in subjection, <clears throat> and I am the king over hundreds in the towns which I have added to the land. And I have built the house of Adeba, and the house of Diplom, and the house of Baal Meon, and I bought there the flocks of land. And Haranim there lived, and Chemosh said to me, Go down, fight against Haranim. I went down, and Chemosh restored it in, it in my days, and from there I died. If you were to read Second Kings chapter three, verses twenty one to twenty seven, you'll see that it has a strong parallel to what is being said in the inscription of the Moabite stone, as I will read now. And when all the Moabites heard that the kings were come up to fight against them, they gathered all that were able to put on armor, and upward and stood in the border. And they rose up early in the morning, and the sun shone upon the water. And the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red. And they said, This is blood. The kings are surely slain, and they have smitten one another. Now therefore Moab did spoil, and, then, and when they came to this camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and smote the Moabites, so that they fled before them. But they went forward, smiting the Moabites, even in their country, and they beat down the cities, and on every good piece of land, cast every man into stone, and filled it, and they stopped down. All, they stopped all the walls of water, and filled all the good trees, only in Karasha, but left the stones were of Albiet, and the singers went about it and smote it. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him, he took with him seven hundred sword, seven hundred men, and bad through swords to break through and then onto the king of Edom, but they could not, and he he took, and he took his eldest son, who should have reigned in his stead, and offered him for a burnt offering on the wall, and there was a great indignation against Israel, and they departed from him, and returned to their own land. I'll also mention 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 17. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Amor. seen that God got defeated by another God even more so in Judges chapter 1 verse 19 it says and the Lord was with Judah and he drove out the inhabitants of the mountain but could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley because they had chariots of iron so they got defeated by iron chariots too so much for omnipotence What's interesting is the story of the inheritance, both in Egypt and in the Canaanite and the Semitic traditions. 
seem to parallel each other very closely. And these similarities too, too strikingly similar to one another. Also, God getting defeated by another God. And we see iron chariots. <laughs> Couldn't even defeat that. So much for omnipotence.